Hello everyone, welcome to Fatty's Feast, where we make the best food you'll ever eat without leaving your backyard. My name is Josh, and today we are going to be taking a first look at the brand new Generation 2 Smoker from Old Country. Let's get started. Okay, so as most of you know, when I left Connecticut to move down here to Nashville, I unfortunately had to get rid of my pride and joy, my baby, my first smoker ever, the Old Country Brazos. And while that was very sad, and I, I just I cried for nights on end, couldn't fall asleep, th there were two reasons for that. First of all, I didn't really have an easy way to move it down here. I could if I needed to, but it was going to be a little bit of a process. The second reason is because behind me here, I have my Patriot Pits Freedom 120. And because I had that, I was like, well, what do I really need the Brazos for? So to my surprise, a few weeks ago, I was contacted by Old Country and asked if I wanted to review their new generation two smoker. I cried myself tears of joy for many days. So I am very excited to review this pit. I was sent this pit free of charge. However, I'm not seeing any monetary gain from this. So I'm gonna give you my full honest review, even though these guys got me started in barbecue and like literally I can't believe I was contacted by them. We're gonna look at this pit. I'm gonna give you my honest feedback. And if it sucks, I'm gonna tell you it sucks. But Taking a look at it at first, I don't think it's gonna suck. I think we're in for a real surprise. So first I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the pit and the concept of it. We'll talk then about the shipping, price, setup process, which is very minimal. And lastly, we'll take a look at some of the really cool features they've put into this pit. So first about the pit, yes, it looks very similar to the old country Brazos. However, this is not a replacement for the Brazos. It is in my case, because I don't have a Brazos anymore, but old country isn't replacing the Brazos, the Pecos, the Wrangler, any of their smokers. This is a new line. This is the generation two smoker. Now the idea behind this pit is to give people a way to step up their barbecue game if they're using something like the Brazos or the Pecos. There are some features on here that you would find on a higher quality pit. Not to say that those pits are low quality. The fact of the matter is, those are entry level pits. Those are the pits you would get if you want to dab in offset smoking. Rather than spending up and getting something like, you know, the, the Freedom 94, or the Freedom 120, which is four to $7,000, you can start low. And I always recommend that. That's the pit I started off with. They are great products. Now, a common problem in barbecue is when you want to upgrade your smoker, but you need to spend $4,000 to get to the next level. And the goal of Old Country is to give you a cheaper option so you don't have to spend that crazy amount of money. When you look at smokers, there's really no in-between between the Brazos and the next level up. I mean, you're gonna spend a good amount of money to get a smoker. And that can be very frustrating, especially when you want to step up your game. You, you're ready to step up your game and you just don't have the monetary means to do so. So from everything I've seen, this is the first smoker of its kind to come in at an affordable price point that sits between the Brazos and the next level up, which would be something like the Freedom 94. This smoker retails for only $18.99. That's right, $18.99, no, I'm just kidding. $1,899, so $1,900. And these are available for purchase through Academy Sports on their website. Now I say that's affordable because in the realm of smokers, that is very affordable. I mean, hell, if you knew you wanted to get an offset smoker and you just wanted to start with this, this might be a good option for you because you're not spending 4,000. I never recommend spend over two grand on a starter smoker, but this has some of the bells and whistles that'll make your life a lot easier compared to what it would be on something like the Brazos. And the last thing I'll say on that is if you haven't seen my video review of the Brazos pit, go check that out. That, that was a really old video from when the channel was called Tubby Time. I'll put the link in the description and above my head so you can check that out. One thing you'll know in that video is the shipping process was painful. And with this smoker, I don't know if they've just improved their shipping process, but it was a breeze. So this smoker was delivered to me, I think it was like 10 or 12 business days after I put the request in for it, but they were calling me, they being the shipping company, were calling me the day after and saying, hey, we can get it to you on Tuesday. And I think I ordered it on a Friday or something. I was like, what, seriously? So it took way less time, probably because I'm near an Academy sport. So if you're up in the Northeast or out West where you don't have Academy, it's gonna take you a little bit longer. I can't really comment on the price of the shipping, but I'm assuming it's gonna be the same as what it was for the Brazos. So for me, that was about a hundred bucks. 
you're up in the Northeast, that's what you're probably gonna pay. But the one thing I truly enjoyed about this is unlike my Brazos, this thing came in a crate. It was so much easier to get out and disassemble. My Brazos came wrapped in just wrap on a pallet. And because of that, we suffered some damage. There was uh, bent latches. Uh, one of the wheels was bent. Uh, there was a nick in the firebox, I think it was. This one, literally picture perfect, no damage because of that crate. And it was very easy to get off the pallet because there are casters on the front now. That was something the Brazos didn't have. So when I had to take my Brazos and move it all the way from my driveway to my backyard, I wanted to die. This one was very simple, even though I really didn't move it that far. I moved it from the front of my driveway to under my covered patio here. But the casters made life so much easier. They're a little loud. It's really not that bad. Now, the last thing I'll say regarding the shipping and delivery process is there's two things you have to keep in mind. First of all, this is not seasoned. This is raw metal that's painted, okay? So we do have to season the smoker when we get it. I'm actually gonna put a video out in a few weeks where I'll season the smoker and I'll do a temperature test on it. The other thing we have to keep in mind is just like the Brazos, there are these little ports for your thermometers. So you do have to buy thermometers separately. Now, let me bring you in close. This is what I got. The Old Country Barbecue Pits Signature Thermometer. It's really, they're, they're great. I mean, they're only 15 bucks at Academy Sports. If you wanted to, you could go and get a Teltru, like I have on my other smoker that run you, you know, like 200 bucks a piece. You can't go wrong with those. Those are gonna give you very accurate readings. These, just get the job done. Sometimes they're a little off, but there's no like calibration or anything. You can get a calibrated, or a, a thermometer you can calibrate. Also, it's like three bucks more than this, but this has a three inch stem on it. They're perfect for this. I got two of them, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. So that being said, let's get into the fun stuff, and I'll really walk you through all the features and the differences between this and the other old country pits. Okay, so first off, let's take a look at the firebox here. The first major difference is there is no opening on top of this firebox. You can't use it as a grill. So I love how they took that out. Let's take a look down here at the door. So the door here has this latch you can just pull up, which I like a lot better than the other models. And then down here, we have a vent. I never liked the circular vent on the other models, which was right here. This vent is designed to take air in below or at great level where the fire is. So you can adjust this just like this. So let's take a look at that. You can pull this open. And right here, that's what that looks like on the inside. These are a little bit loose. They're designed to be. Um, it's a little weird, but it works pretty well. Okay, let's take a look inside the firebox. You still have this grate here where your ash will fall through. I never liked that, so I may take that out, but we're gonna give it a test. You can see the inlet for your heat. And the inside of this firebox is much bigger than the Brazos. The reason, it's fully insulated. Look at that, all the way around. A fully insulated firebox. That's one of the biggest features of this smoker. You're gonna be able to maintain your temps a little easier, you're going to have continuous heat, and you're going to use less wood in the long run. So the thickness of this firebox is actually two parts. The inner steel is quarter inch thick. The outer steel is eighth inch thick. So that gives you about three eighths thickness altogether. But there's two inches of mineral wool, right? I think that's how you say it. That's on the inside, like I said, fully insulated. That's a really cool feature, and I have never seen a firebox that's insulated on a smoker at the price point of $18.99. Really, really cool. Now, as far as the firebox measurements go, the length of it is 20 inches. The outer diameter is 22 inches. So take off, you know, I don't know what that is, three inches or so on either side. And you're looking at about, I can't do math, dude. I don't know, 16, right? Is that right? Something like that. So plenty of space to maintain a fire. The last thing I'll mention is I'm curious how hot this latch is gonna get. On the Brazos, it was an issue, but I never really latched it. I don't know if I'll latch this one. I might just keep it open like so, but we'll see. All right, let's move down to the base of the smoker. You got your traditional old country wheels on this guy, plus those casters I was talking about earlier. They're kind of small, but they get the job done. They support the weight very well. I haven't noticed any buckling or anything. And then you got your traditional wood rack like you get on all of them. All right, moving up to everyone's favorite spot, the cooking chamber. So notice this handle is much bigger than the other models. It's just welded on there like so. Um, I'm curious also how hot this handle is going to get. 
because it doesn't really have anything protecting it on the outside. It doesn't roll, so you just gotta lift it up. Notice here we have three separate ports for thermometers. On the other models, you either had a port here or you had them both in these locations. Now they put one on this side, and I really like that. So that's why I got two thermometers. One's going here, one's going here. This temperature, you know, it's, it's great for monitoring the stuff you have up top, but I always thought it was pretty useless. So we'll really be able to see with those thermometers what the temperatures are at the front and back. The next thing I wanna show you is the change in design of the door. Notice the door sits on the outside now versus being on the inside. I'm not sure what the reason is for that. We're gonna see if that actually holds in any smoke or if you really have to make modifications to it. All right, as we open this door, it feels pretty much just as heavy as the Brazos, maybe actually a little bit lighter, I'm not sure. So let's lift this up and see what we're working with on the inside. The first thing we'll notice is there are reinforcements on the door to prevent warping. So that just kind of speaks to their mission to get this smoker to live longer than you. I mean, they're really trying to preserve it and keep the quality for years to come. One thing I forgot to mention, there's no front shelf on the outside of this guy. Is that good or bad? I don't really know. So next we have our cooking grates here, one up top and one at the bottom. As always, these guys slide out. I noticed with this one, as soon as you get to the middle, it, it's gonna tip on you. One thing the shelf kind of helped was keeping that in line and not having it fall. So I don't know if the sliding is really worth it because there's only this one thing on either side holding it in. So this cooking chamber is 36 inches long on the outside. Also, this is all quarter inch thick steel. So you're basically getting the industry standard with this guy. The grate itself is 35 inches in length and 17 inches in depth. Now the top grate, which I always kind of found useless, I never used it really on the Brazos. I don't know why you'd slide this guy out. I mean, it doesn't tip like the other one, but this is eight inches in depth and also 35 in length. I really don't know what you'd cook on here unless you were doing like chicken wings or something. It could fit a rack of ribs, but like literally one rack possibly, maybe two, if you wanna take the chance and have it close to the firebox. So we'll see if I use that. All in all, I think the cooking space is kind of smaller than the Brazos. Now I was actually at Academy Sports yesterday looking at the Pecos model, and it just, for whatever reason, this cooking area seems smaller. It might just be like by an inch on either end, an inch shorter, an inch less wide, right? Less deep, but as we know, that inch can make a huge difference, right? At least that's that's what I've been told, I don't know. All right, but one of the coolest things I wanna show you is underneath. First off, the baffle plate that I hate is now removable. You can just take this guy right out. This literally just sits in here. Now you don't have to worry about cutting the edges and the, the welds and ugh, that was such a pain. And there's just some tacks down here to let it sit on, which makes it so much nicer. And next we have an included tuning plate. This thing is really cool. Now it's designed to go right against the baffle like so, and you can have the heat come up here. I'm very curious how this is going to work out because I've tried doing something like this in the Brazos and it didn't make a huge difference as far as having the hot spot right in the middle because of this baffle. Now, if we wanted to, we could flip this too, but we'll test that out as well. You have your grease drip in the same exact spot as the other smokers. Just make sure you get a bucket so you don't pour grease all over your floor there and get a uh, valve if that's something you're into. And then over here we have the inside of our collector. So let's take a look at the stack. So the first thing we notice is different handles, right? You, you didn't notice the collector. I noticed the handles, obviously. No, the handles make this way easier to move than the Brazos. The Brazos just had that thin metal on the outside that wrapped around. You can really get a grip on this guy and move him where you want. But here we have the collector. It's a tiny collector, but it'll get the job done, I think. Obviously, it doesn't go across the whole width of the smoker. You're looking at about four inches tall here. And then the stack is just bolted on with five bolts if you need to take it off for whatever reason. But even under my canopy here, it fits pretty nicely. Now, from the collector to the top of the stack, we're looking at 36 inches. And once again, the collector's four inches, so take that off. 32 inches for the stack itself. And that actually measures fine considering this guy is 36 inches as well. And then a little bit of a change in the damper up top. So this guy just kind of opens and closes like so. One major thing you'll notice is the stack is not as fat now. It's only four inches in diameter across. They really focused on the height of the stack and the draw from the firebox through the smoker rather than having a fat stack 
that's this tall right on the end. Once again, this just kind of moves freely. It's not, you know, it's fine. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys is the size comparison between this guy and that other guy. I mean, if I back out here, you can see the difference. This smoker here, it's gonna run you $18.99. The smoker back there, that's gonna run you seven grand. So there's really no comparison between these smokers. They're really made for different people. So let's get a different view. See this one? Very nice, right? See this guy? Bigger firebox, bigger cooking chamber, obviously, bigger stack. I mean, it's, it's really two different smokers. Obviously, the Freedom 120 is better than the Generation 2, but that's because it's a different smoker. And for what it is, this smoker looks pretty damn good. All right, so the last thing I wanna to touch on is who is this smoker made for? As I kind of said before, the goal of this smoker or the goal of Old Country is to allow you to bring your barbecue game up to the next level without spending thousands and thousands of dollars. I truly think if you're on the Pecos model, you would like upgrading to this smoker. It costs, you know, $1,500 more than the Pecos, just a little less actually, but it gives you those kind of bells and whistles that you only find in high quality, expensive smokers. If you're gonna step up from the Brazos to this, I might wait and see what other things Old Country comes out with in the future. I don't know of any plans, but if they continue to make smokers around this line, the Generation 2 line, I think we're gonna see some other products from them. Also, I truly think this could be an entry level smoker. If you can afford the $18.99 price point, I mean, I would go for it. This smoker is built to last. The additions of the insulated firebox, the collector, the properly sized stack, those are gonna make your life so much easier, especially when you're trying to learn. So in review, I really like what Old Country's trying to do here. I like how they're trying to get their place in the market between something like the Brazos and a very expensive smoker. I think they're gonna disrupt the industry with this. I think this is a great machine. So I'm really excited for what they're gonna be pumping out and for their success. I truly don't think you can go wrong, but we haven't used it yet, we're gonna see. Everything so far to me seems to tell me that this is much better than my experience with the Brazos. The shipping was much better. The movement of this thing was much better. I think all of the features we talk about today are going to make a huge difference. I really love the insulated firebox, the casters, the stack, the collector. I love that it's all quarter inch thick steel still. The only thing I'm not sure about are the sliding trays and that tray up top. And I'm kind of curious about the baffle and the tuning plate. But we'll see that in the next video when we actually season this guy and do a temperature test. That being said, I hope you guys found value in today's video. If you did, smash that like button and get my content out to more people. It truly means a lot. Go check out this smoker on Academy Sports website. I'll put a link in the description. And be sure to check out the next video, which I'm going to post right here. Over here will be a random reviews playlist. Hours of entertainment just for you of me reviewing smokers, grills, and whatever you could think of. And then smack dab in the middle if you love this bald, bearded, all-around average, and diabetic face so much. You can subscribe to see more of me. And until next time, everyone, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay hungry.